Hi guys, this is Step Up. So I wanted to share a dream the Lord gave me last night. And it's important because it's talking about that there is going to be, and already is, shortage um, supplies, uh, supply shortages. And, um, and also that right now we are able to actually reach many of the people who have been uh, fallen victim to this cow jab and we can snatch them out of the fire so my dream started off with me in this mansion and I knew it was representing God's house and there was a lot of little children in there, which represents all the believers because we become as little children. And then there were some adults who were basically teachers and supervisors who were helping with the children. So this is those shepherds that the Lord's put over the flock. Um, and so I was one of those adults in there, one of the teachers and helping with the children, herd the children, teach the children, etc. So that's, you know, what the Lord has called me to do here on YouTube. So the dream continues on, and I see myself completing those duties in this mansion with these children and other um, teachers, okay? And then I... Um, We would um, constantly be on the lookout for pests, okay? Like bugs and, um, and insects and things like that. And, um, you know, rats and things in the mansion. Because we wanted to make sure the mansion was clean. It didn't have any issues. So we were diligent about pest control and those pests actually represent the enemy trying to infiltrate the church so we are supposed to cast out demonic entities in the name of Jesus Christ and plead the blood of Jesus Christ over our church and ourselves so that we can our small flock whatever we're in charge of the the Lord is um ushering us to be protectors, to be the watchmen, to warn the people uh, ahead of time when we see danger approaching, okay? So that's what uh, a good um, servant in the Lord does, okay? No matter what, especially those who are called to be shepherds and leaders. That's part of our post. So we found... Uh, the teachers, we found some pests in one of the children's bedrooms so that we went over there and um, we were, and it was very difficult to find. So these, these, um, this represents that the enemy, Satan, he's very cunning, okay? And he's very subtle with de deception, okay? He's the father of lies. And he can be hard to discern at times, okay? Um, it takes experience and it takes the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So we have to be mature in the spirit to fully comprehend and cope with these things and discern these things. Um, so this is why the leaders are needed for the, the young flock, okay? the babes in Christ, which again, many can stay babies in Christ, no matter what. Um, it depends on our post that we're called the measure of the Holy Spirit and how much we strive to increase in the measure that we're given of the Holy Spirit, which we're encouraged to do to increase in the oil of the Holy Spirit, going from glory to glory. Okay, so that's walking after the Spirit and denying the flesh through repentance 
and um, works of righteousness, such as reading the Bible, um, you know, praying, again, um, treating others as you wish to be treated, and so on and so forth. We can see those, um, um, the ways of the Lord, and learn his ways in the Bible. And that's why it's important to continue reading the Bible. And um, it's not a, like a one-shot deal. The Bible is like, you know, an onion that has layers and deeper understanding. So basically, we got, we found this giant slug in this room. Um, and it was like a leech, okay? Like a blood-sucking leech. But it was huge. Um, we removed it successfully, but that is just one form the enemy is using um, that the Lord is wanting to warn his people, his sheep about, is that these small little um, uh, devices of Satan can latch on to you unknowingly and, you know, uh, suck the spirit out of you. Okay, it can diminish you in the oil, um, in your faith, in your walk, you know, suck in the blood, suck and suck and suck in you till you're, you know, weak and, and um, vulnerable. Uh, so that's what the word says that Satan wears down the saints. Okay. So this, this leech had gotten so big that obviously the ones he was preying on he had really worn them down, okay? And we understand that we're in that place where we've been worn down, okay? The majority of the sheep have been worn down who hear his voice because of the works of the enemy going on right now. So we got rid of that. And so we need to be mindful of the, the tactics. Again, don't let the enemy steal your joy in the Lord. Okay? Because we have a greater promise. Our greatest joy and hope is our blessed hope found in the rapture. Okay? So don't let anybody steal your joy. Um... We are encouraged to love his appearing. And again, the word warns, let no man steal your crown for a reason. Okay. So the thing is, Satan can steal your rewards. A crown is a type of reward. Okay. So not everyone's rewards are the same in the kingdom. It's all dependent on their work. Okay. Their, their, um, their works of righteousness. Um, because the Father is, um, he, he rewards those who diligently seek him and serve him. So anyways, after that scene, then um, I went out of the mansion. I had a duty to do. And I had to go across this giant field. It, from the back of the mansion. Um, and across the, after the field, there was a little outpost, okay? And it was a mailing outpost. Um, so I went inside and I was investigating. And I noticed that there was a, a bunch of letters all in this outpost and that the mailmen were either behind or not able to take them all out or were, weren't taking them out, okay? So there was a delay in service and there wasn't just stop to service. And um, I remember thinking when I was seeing this, I was like, oh no, that means that the supply chain is dwindling and um, the resources are just not going to get out. To people who need them. So I was looking in this um, little um, mail hut and I was looking for paper, envelopes, boxes, just things that I could collect 
um, you know, for resources to bring back to the, to the mansion, to the house of God. And I found very little. There was absolutely no paper there. I was looking at all the paper and all the paper had been written on. It was already in letters um, that hadn't been mailed out. Okay. So this represents a spiritual reality and a physical reality. Okay. So the physical reality is that the supply chain is it being affected. Okay, we're going to see more and more that resources are just going to run out. They're not going to be accessible. Some are going to disappear altogether. Okay. And the service to get them is going to be greatly delayed. Um, so this is going to be very hard on people. And, um, and then the, the second understanding and um, interpretation of this spiritually is that we have a bunch of prayers that are just being collected and sitting there. They are not getting sent out. Okay, these messages we need to send to God, they're not getting out. They're just sitting there. So that means that there's a lack of prayer in the church. Okay. People need to step up their game. They need to pray for the body of Christ. They need to pray for others. They need to pray for their enemy. They need to pray. Um, as we are encouraged in the word, word uh, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Okay. So, um, spiritually, the church is lacking. And, um, you know, don't be surprised that these things correlate because the Lord is trying to wake up his church, you know, if they're withholding their blessings to the world, if they lose their salt to the earth, well, they become good for nothing and they're trodden underfoot, right? And so the Lord is removing his blessings upon the church. So this is a direct correlation with the physical to the spiritual um, condition of the ma majority of the church. So this is this is important warning, okay? Um, don't expect to be blessed by God if you are not uh, doing what you can or are called to do to bless others in the spirit of Christ, okay? So this um, this is the reality. So I left that hut and I noticed there was a commotion going on in the field now suddenly. There was nobody there when I crossed it the first time, okay? So everything was at peace, okay? So this also represents the script, scripture. When there's peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes, okay? So everything was at peace and arrest. And um, suddenly when I came out, now, the scene was vastly different. In the field, there was multitudes of people. And they were being hypnotized to the point where they were mindless. Okay? And they were kind of walking about as if they were zombies. They weren't hurting anybody. They were just walking about. Um, they, they weren't aggressive. They were just literally helpless um, sheep for the slaughter being herded in a mindless state, okay? And there was this giant bulldozer. I mean, like, you know, one that, the one that harvests wheat over the fields? It was being ridden by, um, you know, a couple of these bulldozers were being ridden by some people and they were pure evil. I knew they were evil and they were going behind the people who are walking mindlessly and they were playing this hypnotizing anthem or something that was basically, I knew they were the ones responsible for hypnotizing these people to a mindless, uh, mindless, helpless zombie state. And they were using these 
um, I don't know, columbines or these harvesting machines and they were rolling over the people and they were dying. They were killing them. And they were killing them without care, without concern. Um, they were actually thrilled. These evil people on these things. They were thrilled to kill these people. Um, they found so much joy in it. So they were just bulldozing them and laughing like nothing. And I was horrified because I knew um, these were people who were just you know, innocently being taken advantage of, um, murdered, you know. And so I ran into the field and I grabbed as many people as I could within my reach and I pulled them out of the field and they moved for me. They followed me. I just had to touch them and grab them and pull them and they were fine. They would follow me easily. And so I saved a handful of people, anyone who I could have reached from being destroyed, from being murdered. Now, this represents those people who have taken the cow job. The Lord has also revealed to me that many of these will be turning into mindless zombies, okay? But not all. But I want to let you know, the Lord is showing that right now, before this occurs, before they fully transform or whatever you want to call it, they are in a state of brainwashing. They're, they're in a state of mindlessness. This, okay... This cow job has dumbed them down. Okay. It's dumbed them down. And see, it's, it's degrading them, both, you know, mentally and physically. And we know that it's a depopulation attempt. Okay. So there's going to come a point where these people are just going to die. Because that's what has been the goal. But in the meantime, they can be herded around. And the Lord is saying that even though they're in a state to be taken advantage of by the enemy, because the enemy used this to take advantage of them, to basically follow the narrative to be brainwashed enough to follow the beast system. We see this. They are falling into the fire. They are going to hell. They're being taken advantage of. They're being murdered. But, but God, God says it's not too late for many of them. And if we do our due diligence. If we work the field, the harvesters, if we go in there, we can snatch people from the fire. We can snatch them away from going into hell. We can save even their lives with our prayers and our efforts to preach the gospel, pray for others. Now is not a time to be quiet. Now is a time to stand. For we were called for such a time as this. And if we don't speak, if we don't rise to the occasion of our post that we've been called to, we will be removed and our house will be consumed and salvation will come to these through another way. But the Lord works through his people and now is time for the harvest the harvest of souls has come the end of the age is here the field is ripe and white and ready for harvest and so this 
cow job is actually also the Lord is showing me that it's softening people's hearts. He's using it to harden some people's hearts and he's using it to soften some people's hearts. And I'm telling you, our messages, you'd be surprised, are going to start getting through to save them. The gospel message is going to start getting through. And I can say this because I can vouch for also my family. They've taken it, all of them. And I'm working on them, working on them, preaching the gospel, living, living Christ-like as the light of the earth, as an example. Loving them and treating them as I ought to, as I wish to be. Praying for them, for their healing, their salvation, God's mercy upon them, their repentance. Their salvation. And so this dream is confirming the harvest is here. The harvest of souls is here now. And the reapers are out in the field. The, de the angel of death is out. And uh, the angel of death is reaping. Okay? Okay, the horsemen are out. They're reaping the fields, okay? And we, we, we will see more and more signs of this come to fruition. But we have a duty to do. Now, many are softened. God is saying many minds have been softened because of this. And what was purpose for evil, he says, God says, I have turned it for good. He has condemned those who need to be condemned, who he will not forgive because of what they have done. But he's also softened those people's hearts and minds who need to be saved. But it is, it is our duty. We are called to bring them the good news and to pray for them. And support them as we ought to, as the salt of the earth should. So I'm encouraging you, brothers and sisters, don't lose your your uh, your flavor, your savor, or you will be thrown down and trodden underfoot, good for nothing, by the Lord Himself. He will bring judgment upon you. You will be one in the field reaped by the angel of death. Be careful. This is a warning. And you see, I couldn't save everyone. The harvest is many, but the laborers are few. Few. Very few. In my vicinity, I didn't see anybody else grabbing anybody. I was the only one. So many people died. So many people were lost. Because I just couldn't reach them. There was just too many. But whoever I was able to touch and reach, I saved. So that's my scope of influence. The Lord is willing that no one should perish, but all come to repentance and faith in his Lord Jesus Christ, his son, his only begotten son. God in the flesh, Emmanuel. The only way to heaven and the Father.
And this is the scripture the Lord brought me to uh, brought to mind to me uh, through His Spirit as confirmation in Jude one twenty three. Save others by snatching them from the fire to others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. We are not supposed to um, endorse or, um, you know, have, uh, have favor towards things that corrupt the flesh. Such as this abomination this cow job that corrupts the flesh. We are not, we are not, we are supposed to hate it. But we have to show others this is something to be feared and God can still save you. We can still snatch you out of the fire. It's not too late. You are at a crossroads, my friend. Stop putting your trust in man. It's time to put your trust in God because man is corrupted. Man lives according to the flesh, thinking of themselves, what they may profit. Everything else and everyone else is just expenditure to that goal. But not in the kingdom of God. Not by those who walk according to the spirit instead of the flesh. Others come first. That is the love of Christ. That is why Christ laid his life down for you, for me, for them, so that they and we may be saved. So this is the message the Lord wants to get out. Um, please heed, heed this warning. This is serious. Um, this is a call. Rise up, rise up. The Esters of today, the harvest workers, the harvest is ripe. We are at the end of the age. The wheat and the tares are divided. We need to gather them up now. The Lord has done the work that only He can do. He has brought this abomination to test and to refine and to divide. And now the harvest needs to be collected. Otherwise, it will be trodden underfoot or stolen by the enemy. We need to do the work of the kingdom now. So with that, I pray this message has blessed you and encouraged you. And may the peace of Christ be with you and all of your own in these last days. In Jesus Christ. Amen.